Hello and welcome to our latest in a series of Near Me in a Nutshell. I'm delighted to be here this afternoon with Paul Moran. He's a principal teacher for physiotherapy at Robert Gordon University in Aberdeen. And he's going to speak to us this afternoon about how they've been using Near Me to support student education within physiotherapy academic courses there at Robert Gordon University. So we started using Near Me um, really when COVID hit and we had to adapt all of our, our kind of teaching for our students. Uh, we obviously weren't allowed to bring them in face to face, but we wanted to still get the core values of physiotherapy across. So being able to uh, communicate with people, uh, be able to assess people. And we try to we always try and replicate what happens in clinical practice to the best of our abilities. So we heard that near me was being used in, in clinical practice, so we decided um, well, why can't we do that and try and help prepare our students for that placement? So we introduced the kind of technology to staff, first of all, made sure we know what we were doing, uh, and then we introduced that to students. So we did a couple of different sessions, first of all, where the students would be working with each other, uh, getting themselves familiarised with the technology and how, how it works. Uh, and then we used volunteer patients. So we asked the students, could they carry out a subjective assessment, uh, an objective assessment of using near me with a volunteer patient to uh, to try and simulate what happens in in the real world. And in that journey you had, you know, what any particular challenges you came across and, and what solutions had you found for those? The first challenge was making sure staff felt fully confident and competent with the technology and the software. Um, so we very much kind of liaised as part of the, the kind of school, uh, what is happening and set up sessions to make sure staff were trained first and then kind of delegated that down among staff. So we all knew what was happening uh, before we then uh, introduced it to the students and we could keep things then as, as slick as possible. Um, from a student perspective, I think there was a little bit of anxiety. Again, um, at that time, they were trying to get used to Teams and Zoom and near me uh, and various other things that were going on during COVID times. But uh, once they'd had that kind of run through from staff and then with themselves, that kind of peer session, they felt much more ready when we then brought in the volunteer patients. And again, that now you've been using near me with students. What's been the impact on the student, uh, the student studying, but also the impact on, on you as a university? Yeah, I think. The biggest thing is it's allowed our students to continue to go out on clinical placements, even during COVID and as we came out of COVID, because um, our students go across the country and parts of the country were still using near me for their kind of patient assessments. Some had returned to face to face, some are using a hybrid of a bit of both. Um, and what it's allowed our students to do is go into those placement opportunities ready and raring to go. They've already had that bit of an experience. They've already um, practiced those subjective assessment skills and it's allowed them to, to kind of hit the ground running, um, which I think has been really appreciated by the educators, um, but also the students feel that little bit more confident um, and then that impacts on the, the satisfaction and the enjoyment and success of their placement. Who was I speaking with? I think it was outpatients. Oh yeah. Um, maybe about six months ago now. Oh. But they were saying that they still use, you know, video maybe for for fifty percent of the time. Um, because yeah. yeah. they've worked, they've now worked in that. Actually, let's do the initial one uh, yeah. on Teams or yeah. near me. Yeah. And then we can bring them in if we require, or if we can manage them virtually, then that's like, it. That's what yeah. So yeah. I think it's redesigning how workforce is, and because yeah. they, they, they were one of the ones that commented on um, how well our student was able to communicate. And, and, and finally, any particular messages or encouragement you could offer to, to other academics that are maybe considering this or unsure as to you know, how to get going? Yeah, I my two bits of advice are I'll do it. Um, and I think what really helped us was preparing as a staff group first. So made sure that we were familiarized with the technology. We know the step two guides, uh, because I think if you're confident and competent with what you're doing, 
that comes across when you have the, the students in front of you. So get yourselves kind of prepared is, is a good start. Um, we've actually decided to keep this going. So although we've returned to face-to-face -face teaching and activities with volunteers, we are keeping this element in because it is a different test of, of communication skills. And I think it's a very good experience for the students. Yes, they need to be able to talk to people face to face, but being able to use technology and still have that communication, um, I think replicates what practice will be like now and in the future. So go for it, keep it going and uh, make sure it's embedded. That's super. Thank you so much, Paul, for sharing your insights this afternoon. And, and hopefully we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see uh, people again on another I Name in a Nutshell series. We'll be looking at uh, other academic institutions that have been using this. So thank you very much and cheerio.